Hello. In this video, we will be looking at the different queue and job options, as well as how to set up your own queues. You can access a queue properties from either the queue properties menu or double clicking on a queue tab. The queue options are split into three sections settings, print mode overrides, and other. In the settings, the hot folder tab allows you to set up a hot folder for your queue. A hot folder is a location where any valid jobs that are copied to this location will automatically get added to your queue for printing. Hot folders are a useful way of getting jobs from Apple Mac computers or an internet server. You can also have an option for creating hot folders for templates. This creates a hot folder for each template for this queue. And when a job is added to that particular template folder, it's added to the queue using that template. The queue will automatically create a folder for each of your templates in the location you select. Media setup is covered in a separate video of its own. The layout manager options will depend to some degree on what the media settings you have selected. In the layout manager, you can set various layout and printing options. For example, pause between copies allows you to display a dialog between each printed copy in order to give you time to load a new shirt. You can also choose if unused white space on your page is sent to your printer or not. This can be very device specific and the wrong options can cause printer errors. So it's normally best left with the settings we have provided. You can also choose how you want jobs to be processed. In most cases with t-shirts, printing is left on hold so each shirt can be manually loaded and printed. But in some large production facilities, this is left on rip and print so the jobs are added and printed immediately. Printer status options will depend on your device, but is used to set up a schedule command to be sent to your printer. For example, in this case, I can set up a schedule head clean every 24 hours. Job Reserve will control what happens to a job when it has been printed. Enabling Job Reserve means that the job is saved in the queue after printing in the reserve list. Otherwise, it would just be deleted from the list altogether. If you enable the spool file, then the spooled raster data for your printer is also saved. This will mean that if you wanted to reprint the job, it will not have to be ripped again, but it does require more disk space. For white shirts, the print mode overrides will allow you to make changes to selected print modes for this queue. The print mode used by this queue is displayed in the general tab. Changing the options in the print mode overrides doesn't change the print mode itself, only how it's used in the queue. For example, you can change the rendering intents used for the ICC process. For your information, the difference between the graphics and non-graphics queues supplied is just the rendering intent. Graphics will use absolute rendering intent to give you more vivid output non-graphics queues use a perceptual rendering intent. But if you prefer, you could change this to relative for the graphics modes. For black and colored shirts, both the print mode in the general tab will be blank and there will be no options in the print mode overrides for printer options and ICC. This is because whenever you are printing with an underbase, or doing multiple passes, layer profiles are used instead. Layer profiles allows you to set up multiple passes and each pass can have its own print mode. In this example, we have two layers, an underbase layer for the first pass and a color layer for a second pass. Using add, remove and rename buttons, you can create new layers, delete layers and change the name of layers. The layer name is what's used to display the options for each 
pass in the smart bar of the main window. You can select different print modes for each layer by clicking on the three dots icon. You can still make print mode overrides for each individual layer, but you do this by pressing the edit button on that particular layer. You can select what channels are printed with each layer by enabling or disabling the color checkbox. You can also choose to flood the whole bounding box with a color if you wish using the flood checkbox. Clicking on the show bitmap processing options will extend the window to display the options for creating an underbase. When creating an underbase for a layer, the underbase strength controls how much white you put down under the black and dark areas. 19 would put no white under solid black. Strong would put the same amount of white under black as a bright colour. The values in between put down different percentages of black. As this is a black t-shirt queue and we don't print black, it's set to for 19, but on a colour queue it would normally be higher. The maximum ink percentage is the maximum amount of white to use. If you were finding that too much white was being printed and the white ink was pooling, you could lower this value. The choke is the amount you want to reduce the white ink area to stop it bleeding or peeking out at the edges. You can typically use a higher value for black shirts than coloured shirts. We set five for black shirts and two or three for coloured shirts. The Knock Me Blackout performs an automatic black removal from an image when spooling the data. This way, when printing onto a black shirt, you don't need to remove the black background first. It performs this in exactly the same way as the Not Me Blackout plugin. In the color pass, you can see we've selected to generate a highlight white. The highlight white value has been set to nine weak, and this will just print white where the image is pure white or very close to pure white. The flatten option will adjust the color data being printed based on the transparency. This ensures that where areas are transparent and there is no underbase, no color is printed. The color boost function adjusts the flattening process and will increase the saturation of colors being put down in areas where the transparency is less than 100 and greater than zero. This helps with the blending process of the graphics into the shirt and ensures that semi-white areas where you might be putting down a 50 or 60% white tint has enough color on it to cover up the white underbase properly. You can have as many layers as you want, although not all options can be used with all printers. For example, some printers can't print color and white in the same pass, in which case you can't print a highlight white, as in this example. Some printers you can print the white first and color second in the same pass, in which case you would only need one layer. So the layer configuration will depend upon your printer. Note, when doing colored shirts, you can set your shirt color in the settings general tab. A layer button is available in the smart bar area as a shortcut to take you to the queue layer options directly. When you import a job into the queue, it inherits all the settings of the queue at that time. You can use the layer button in the smart bar with a job selected to take you to the layer settings for that job. Making changes will only affect that job and not the queue or any other jobs. Likewise, changing the queue settings after a job has been imported will not affect existing jobs. We're going to now create a new queue. This will be a special queue that will be set up to print jobs for coloured shirts where we want to print with a custom underbase. 
I'm going to create my job with a custom underbase in Photoshop. And the reason for my custom underbase is that using just transparency, I couldn't print this exactly the way I want to. And the only way is to use a custom underbase workflow. In my example image, you can see I have an RGB image with no transparency. I want to print the cup with letters and text onto a red shirt and the rest of the background as a shirt color. But I want to reproduce the shadow from the cup on the shirt without using any underbase. So it can't be using transparency. To do this, I've created an extra channel. It doesn't matter what the channel is called, so long as it's a spot channel. You can see this defines the white only for the cup and the text and not for the shadow. Custom underbase jobs such as this are only supported when saved as a TIFF and don't work using the Send2 plugins. So you must save as a TIFF and then import the job into the queue manually. I'm going to set up a new queue for processing these jobs. And the easiest way of doing this is to duplicate an existing colored shirt queue and make the changes. Go to Manage Queues, select the queue you want to duplicate, and then click the Duplicate icon. Then I can select my new queue, and the first thing I want to do is give it a new name. So I'll double click on it to go to Queue Properties, and we will call it Color Shirt Best Graphics Custom. Then I can go to my layers and make the changes required to process these custom underbase jobs. All I actually need to do is go to my color layer and disable the flattening option as the flattening process will remove my shadow based on the spot channel. And I don't want that to happen. Now I can import my job and we can see that it will print exactly as I've designed it for with my shadow printing without any underbase. The queues make printing jobs with different processes easy. Once you have them set up the way you want them, you can just print without worrying about the settings for each job. You might set up queues for different underbase settings. Some shirts need more white inks than others. Or you maybe want to set up queues for different printers.